Hey guys, Mike here at Amish Tutorials and welcome back to a new video. All right, today we are going to address a topic that I have been asked to do many, many times. We're going to uh, do an introduction on XGen in Maya, okay? And this is Maya 2016, just to be clear on that. All right. Okay, so XGen, what is it? What can you use it for and how to approach it? Now, before I start to explain that, I need to tell you and show you how to make sure that you have XGen loaded and where you can find it. So we're going to go up to Windows, Settings Preferences. We're going to go to the Plugin Manager. And if you scroll down from the top, you will find a category uh, here where it says XGen MR and XGen Toolkit. Now, if you make sure that these are loaded, you will be able to get the menu. And the XGen MR will allow you to uh, render this in Mental Ray, so the end result. Okay, so we got that. Now, I'm going to do two videos on this topic because there are two kind of main areas that, at least where I use uh, XGen. Uh, one is for archives and one is for, let's say, hair and fur and so on. Okay, so that's the one we're going to do today. The one on archives will be a separate video. All right, so we're going to go to our polygon menu and we're going to start by creating a simple polygon object. In my case, a polygon sphere. All right. Now, my grid is in centimeters, so the sphere is very, very small. And it's important in uh, XGen to make sure that your object is large enough. So I'm going to hit R and I'm going to scale that up. Because otherwise, your hair uh, particles or objects, they will look like tubes. Okay? So I created this sphere. And once I have that selected, that's important. I'm going to go to my XGen window and I'm going to click on the X to open the menu. Now, right now, with this selected, I need to start by creating a new description. And again, uh, import collection and so forth. That's what we'll do in the next video. So I'm going to create a new uh, description. And here I need to do a couple of things. First of all, I have to name my description and I have to name a collection. Now, what's the difference? Uh, let's say we will call our description hair because, for example, this is a human head and we're putting hair on it. But under collection, you can maybe have different types of hair, like a mustache, a beard, a hair on the head, and so forth. So this would, for example, be a beard. Okay. In this case, uh, and you can add more than one selection to this uh, description. Uh, so let's just leave it at that. All right, what's next? Um, it's asking us what type of primitives do you want to use? Are we going to create long hair, vines, and so forth? Or are we going to create groomable splines, uh, like uh, short hair, fur, grass, and so forth? We're going to do that because that will allow us to kind of manipulate length, direction, and so forth. Okay. Now, once we select that, we have the option to uh, either do it in uniform rows or randomly across the surface uh, or at points where we specify. But because we went with groomable splines, we automatically get this option. Okay. If you use archives, you can kind of define where you want them. And then the control, use groomable tools. That again is predefined based on this choice. So we're going to hit create. All right. Once we do that, you see a number of kind of short hairs showing up on our sphere. And I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see it. Okay. Now we kind of <clears throat> want to have a little bit more hair going on there. So we're going to go to our primitives and the density, if we are on top here, the density is set to a one. Uh, let's bump that up to, let's say 50. Okay. Now, once we hit enter, you would expect this to be more dense. Not the case, because every time you change something, you go up to this eyeball here and you update the preview. So once I click on that, it's going to calculate and you can see that the hair is much more dense, right? And I'm just going to call it hair. All right. So cool. Uh, if you scroll down, you have a number of options you can play with and just go through that and have fun with it. For example, taper. If I zoom in, quite a bit. You can see that these hairs are all well, pretty straight. 
So I'm going to bump up the taper value. Doesn't really matter. Let's do one. And again, I'm going to hit my preview. And once I do that, you can see that the shape of the hairs change. And when I scroll out, you can see that only this area is affected. Reason being that the preview only updates based on what you have in your scene. And at the point, it was this. Okay. So if I hit preview again, it's going to be all over. All right. Now, so have fun with that. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our grooming tools. And that's kind of fun. And here you can uh, decide how long the hair should be in certain areas, the width of the hair, whether you want to bend it and so forth. Now, once I hover my, I'll just click on length. Once I hover over, you can see this big circle, which is kind of my grooming brush. And I'm going to hold down B on my keyboard and left click and drag to kind of make that smaller. Okay. And then we're going to zoom in a bit. And we're going to start to brush in this area here. And I'll zoom out so we can see it better. Okay. Now, it's probably not that obvious, but I'll rotate this here a little bit so you can see it. You can see that the hair there is starting to become longer. Okay. And let's just uh, make that nice and big so we can see it a bit better. Okay, pretty obvious that the hair is longer, right? Now, what else can you do? You can, for example, uh, have the hair bend because normally the hair wouldn't look like that. So we're going to hit our bend option here and we're going to go over that same area and we're going to start to brush the hair backwards. And you can very clearly see that that's happening. And that's just another example of what you can do with all these grooming tools, all right? So uh, you have the color, obviously, you can change. Uh, let's do maybe something that looks like grass, okay? And we'll take the base color here, and we'll do kind of a dark green, I guess. Hang on. Yep, yeah, there you go. And then let's see, we'll go over to our density and let's do 150 and hit preview. We'll have to calculate that. And there you go. So just a few options, um, have fun with that. Uh, it's really cool. And, and again, you can use this to create hair, grass, um, you know, especially in grass, it's kind of cool to have areas where the grass is a bit longer and a bit shorter to give it some realism. And in hair, same thing, you know, sideburns would typically be shorter, uh, hair on the head would longer and so forth. And uh, yeah, that's it. So uh, hopefully this was a good introduction, at least to the basics. If you have any questions, let me know. I will help you if I can. And that said, thank you guys for watching and I'd love to see you guys again. Bye.